How's it going YouTube? Navy Sooner here. Today we're going to be doing a beer and a gun. Yep, review over this gun and we're drinking this beer right here. Shannonbach. We're doing this review kind of like I did the Geisley URGI where I drank a beer and gave you a review on it. Only this time we're doing it with Shiner Bach. It's more of a prevalent beer than the beer that I did with Geisley. It's from the Spotsil Brewery out of Shiner, Texas. I like everything about the state of Texas. Yes, I know that my name is Navy Sooner and I talk about being an OU fan. The only thing I don't like about the state of Texas is that puke orange place down in Austin that really likes to carry dildos. Yeah, dildos, other than guns. To the people that know about Shinerbach, you know that it is delicious. Some people want to say that it's not, and those people really don't know anything about beer. To the people in the Northeast, think yingling, but better. Yes, I said it, yingling, but better. To the people everywhere else that don't know what Shinerbach is, think, I don't know, like an amber lager. It says Bach, but it's more like an amber lager. You can see this beer being drank in the movie Friends with Benefits, starring Justin Timberlake and Mila Kunis. And they're sitting there drinking beers, talking about, hey, we should fuck. Basically, how it went. Anyways, enough about the beer. Let's get into the gun. I gotta go another beer first. All right, the gun that we're reviewing today is the Palmetto State Armory PA-10. This is the Gen 2 version, and it is in 308. The difference between 308 and 762 by 51 is basically the difference between the search button on Google and the search button on YouTube. Same thing, just branded differently. Now, some say that you can't shoot a 308 out of a 762 by 51, but here's a little tip. It doesn't fucking matter. Your gun's not going to blow up. Disclaimer, though. If you do shoot a gun that's 762 by 51 chambered and it's as old as your grandmother, like back when she put plastic on her couch because she was a squirter, not because of your boogery fingers, don't put 308 through 762 by 51 in that instance. Now, if you do want to watch something blow up, watch the blood glucose levels of 95% of the haters of my channel. Yeah, that blood glucose level is going to skyrocket and blow the fuck up whenever they get a whiff of a fucking skittle. This firearm is an AR-10 platform firearm. I say platform because AR-10s aren't really like AR-15s, except for they kind of look the same, but a lot of parts are different between different companies. So this is an AR-10 patterned 308 Winchester rifle. The barrel is 18 inches in stainless steel. It also comes in 6.5 Creedmoor. Why am I reviewing the Gen 2 when the Gen 3 is out? Well, because there's only two differences, only one of them major. The Gen 3 comes with an adjustable gas block. Now, the 6.5 Creedmoor in the Gen 2s came with an adjustable gas block, but they blew ass. The only other difference between the Gen 2 and the Gen 3 is cosmetic. You can put a Gen 2 upper on a Gen 3 lower, and you can put a Gen 3 upper on a Gen 2 lower. Basically, I'm doing a review over this, and I, I've had this gun probably longer than any other gun in my collection right now. Also, another reason that I'm doing a Gen 2 review over the Gen 3 is I don't own a Gen 3. I want to get a Gen 3 upper and 6.5 Creedmoor, but you can also find the Gen 2s on the secondary market very easily. I purchased this firearm separately. I purchased the upper and the lower completely separately. Here's a little hint on why Palmetto State Armory is cheaper than other companies, Besides being a little bit less quality than other companies, the reason that these are cheaper if you go with their uppers and their lowers is there is a thing called an FAET tax. 11% tax put on complete firearms, well at least sh rifles, shotguns, I believe pistols and revolvers is 10%, but there's an 11% federal tax put on complete firearms. Now, if you buy them separately, they don't have to tax you. But guess what Palmetto State doesn't do? They don't tax you 
for the FAET tax. They lower the prices for what it would be if you didn't buy it complete. Other companies don't do that. The rail on this firearm is M-Lock. Y'all do know that I have a pet peeve on firearms that use M-Lock rails. There's not M-Lock all the way around, but at the price that these firearms are, I'm not really complaining about that. Another thing that I do not like about this rail is it does not have anti-rotation tabs. That was a little bit, this came out a little bit before everybody started doing anti-rotation tabs, but they did have anti-rotation tabs at the time. It's got the clamping method here, which is easier if you're trying to take off the handguard and put it back on without removing the barrel nut. There are also QD slots at the three and six o'clock positions on this handguard. Now let's look at the lower. The grip on the lower is kind of a A1 slash A2 slash Hogue over molded grip style. The angle is not what I would like. I would probably go in and change the grip out, but I don't really shoot this gun that much. Like I said before in my Shahisafan slash COVID-19 firearm loadout, this is more of a here you go dude rifle for me at the moment. The trigger on this firearm is pretty damn heavy. It's like the Daniel Defense M4V7 video that I did where it was a damn heavy trigger. But this isn't a $1,600 to $1,700 gun. This firearm, the upper and the lower, was $700. So I'm not worried about the trigger being so fucking heavy. It comes with anti-walk anti -walk slash anti-rotation pins. I used to really think that these were something that should be put on almost every firearm, but now I think that as long as you install your trigger correctly, you do not need these. It's still a nice little option that they added in. This lower came with a Magpul stock. You can get it with basically any Magpul stock that was ever made. You can also get it in the M4 carbine version stock, or you can get it in the A2 fixed stock style. I don't remember if I said it before earlier in the video, but the barrel is stainless steel. It comes with an A2 style birdcage muzzle device on there, but I decided to go with the Surefire Battle Comp. The Battle Comp is a really good break. So how does she shoot? After I put the Battle Comp on here, she shoots very smoothly. She stays down for a 308 and I can get back on the target very easily. If I'm shooting at longer distances, I can stay on target and see where my rounds have hit. I have the gun and the scope sighted in for 762 by 51 Malaysian ball ammo. It is surplus ammo and it's done pretty good. As a matter of fact, I took it out to 650 yards and was able to connect four out of six shots at 650 yards today, earlier today. Using this Malaysian ball ammo, it's what I have it zeroed for. Take two more shots at 650. And yes, I'm making excuses. Windy as shit out here. I hit earlier when there wasn't any wind, so it's my fault, I guess. Ting, got it. Let's see if we can do that again. The reason I look kind of like a bro is because I was out swimming and this is just what I wanted to wear. I didn't want to have to go change and put on like a another shirt or anything. So yeah, I was outside shooting and then I went swimming. I went to a new gun range to go shoot that 650 yards with this gun. It was in Axtell, Texas and it was the Axtell gun range. And when I was shooting, the winds were 13 to 15 miles per hour with gusts of 20 to 25 miles an hour. It was coming from between my 10 and my 11 o'clock position. The groups that I get with that Malaysian ammo are about two and a half inches at 100 yards. And then if I use PPU match ammo, which I use in my 308 bolt action, the group actually shrinks to about 1.75 inches. Can this gun be used for a battle rifle? No. Well, I say no. But if shit were to hit the fan and this was all you had, then use it. By all means, use it. 
you might be able to find something else to use, but this in a pinch would be good. Now what it is good for is hunting in those states that you don't have to worry about what you use to kill an animal. Would it make a good DMR rifle? Yes, it would make a great DMR rifle. In fact, I have this kind of set up as a DMR rifle. It's more like a 308 recce style rifle, I guess, with the one to six. But I mean, I was hitting out the 650 yards. DMR rifles are roughly around that distance and a little bit further, I believe. And I'm sure I could hit out to that distance with this. Because I don't think it is rugged enough to be an actual battle rifle, like CQB, like get in the shit type of fucking gun, I do believe it would make a good DMR sitting in a distance, helping people out that are getting into the shit, being Overwatch style rifle. What I have mounted on this is a primary arms 1-6. to six. It's got the ACSS reticle in it. Um, LPVO style, like I said, one to six. It is a second focal plane. I would prefer a second focal plane for more CQB style, since I have this kind of set up as a recce style kind of rifle. Um, the second focal plane is perfect for that. Uh, if you are using it for more of a long distance, then the first focal plane would be better because second focal plane, you have to go all the way up to six to use the drop in it. Now what I will say, this is my third AR-10 style rifle that I ever owned. I did have another one after that and I did a review on it and it is the Aero Precision AR-10 style 6.5 Creedmoor. I have sold every other AR-10 style gun that I've had except for this one. I wanted to make sure that I kept it, so I spray painted it. Trying to sell a spray painted gun on the secondary market is pretty hard. Most people don't want a rattle can job on a gun that they've just purchased. Now there are people out there that don't mind buying guns that have been spray painted because they know the potential that the gun has. Now what I will do with this gun is change out the trigger. Well, I might not change out the trigger. I might try the whole like low price trigger job thing where you sand it. I have other extra mil spec triggers that I can throw in here if it doesn't work. I also wish that Palmetto State Armory would do something other than a stainless steel barrel on these. I mean, the stainless steel barrel is better for precision shooting, but I think that a different style barrel would be nice to... Well, that's my review of this gun. Go get you some Shiner Bach. Navy Sooner out. And before you fucking safety Nazis say anything, the gun was unloaded the entire time and I didn't touch the fucking trigger.